Hello. Hello. Morning. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. <sighs> hey, Mark. Awesome. Do you think before we start, before we get into this, we could just recap uh, the progress that all of you made on the last call? Sure thing. Great, thanks. Clemens is here. Hi, right, Clemens. Hi, Clemens. Morning. Morning. Uh, good afternoon. So whoever has the pen could probably put me on the attendee list, please. B A S S V A S T E R S. Thank Check the doodle to see who else was going to be making it. So I'm missing Doug Davis, Mark Fisher, and Plus Dyson.
All right, and it's five after. Why don't we uh, get started with uh, who's on? Okay. So Austin, you requested us to go over last week's. Yes, a quick recap would be helpful. And so we, for, first off, we went down the list of uh, people and chatted about what, what projects are incorporating cloud events, how are they doing it, what can they provide? And so we had a list of those. And then we started brainstorming a bit about what are the type of ideas we could come up with for um, showing interrupt, meaning that how could we produce, move cloud events via middleware and then consume them uh, in some interesting ways. So we had some of those ideas. Uh, we did talk about the demo assumptions, which is that if we did have a demo, we would not worry about some, some of the, you know, we, we put it together with uh, duct tape and bailing wire that we wouldn't worry about some of the issues around security or authentication, et cetera, that if we could just get some uh, feeds going, that would be sufficient for now, but mm -hmm. longer term, we'd have to put more around it. And then for next steps, uh, Sarah had taken an action item to think about what would be a storage uh, set of cloud events. Uh, and then uh, Clemens was also going to be looking at, uh, I believe it was the app event ones. Clemens? Uh, no, I was um, uh, actually supplying things that we have in our cloud, but I don't oh, think okay. building any events. Okay. So Austin, is that a good enough overview of what we discussed? Sure. I have uh, just a couple quick questions, though. Yeah. All these projects that are supporting this, and first off, this is this is pretty good, I think. If we're going to go announce this kind of event format, that could make data more liquid, more portable. And we have all these people already supporting it in this early stage. I think that that's going to really amplify that message. Um, are all these going to, what level of support are all these projects going to have by, by Cloud Native Con, which is in like 20 days? <laughs> uh, I think that's somewhat TBD. We didn't get down to specifics about, I think people were going back to research what they may be able to do. I think some of this is hinging on whether Google and Microsoft could get some of their eventing, uh, get cloud event events generated because that's somewhat of a compelling demo. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's up, you know, it's up to each individual to be able to state what they can or can't do. So, so I can tell you from Microsoft, um, I sent email on Friday, um, where I showed you what the mapping might be to, um, from a particular events. The minimal thing we'll be able to do is write effectively a, um, a function um, that will take our native events as we have them today and mm -hmm. kind of remap them into the cloud events format. Yep. Um, that's the minimal thing we can do um, so that we, and, and that function basically gets, it, it, it becomes a, a quasi subscriber. So you create a function, the, kind of, the function has a target um, that it pushes to, and then it, it gets an event from event grid um, and basically go and does some translation and pushes that through. So we can sure. build that in relatively short time. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that, I think from a, that's from a coding perspective, that's probably going to be our contribution is to say, give me your eye and I'm going to deliver an event for you. And the event is going to look this way. And the, the, how this event is going to look is effectively the, more or less the combination of the HTTP binding and the JSON binding that I have checked in. 
um, as uh, as uh, PR. Um, and uh, the the format that I posted on Friday, which is um, effectively the remapping of our existing events into um, the the JSON mapping. Great, that makes sense. It seems like anyone with a mature FAS offering would be able to implement something in that using that pattern as well. Absolutely, but they would have to understand. So, so the reason why I'm offering us us building this this function. Mm -hmm. is simply that we would that we would take that upon us to go and do the mapping and then we would further on deliver to whoever whoever has a fast offering so i would not make it it, it seems to be nonsensical in this context here to make anybody understand event grid events mm -hmm. so i would rather go and do the, a translation um where um you know i'm getting a uri um to push to or an hdp url in that case or hdps and then um, we're going to deliver the, the cloud events um, event. And if everything goes, goes very swimmingly, then we might be able to do without that function and push straight from event grid. But that's early, 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 early thinking. Yeah, right. right. But the idea is obviously that we can go and get rid of uh, that interim function as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Yep. OK. So that's what we would do, and then, and then from that point on, um, I hope that uh, some heroes will step up and turn it into something demoable. So, Clemens, are you talking about an, an Azure function when you say function, build a function? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. So, so effectively, if all, all that does is is just takes our event grid event and, and beats that into the into the cloud events format. And what would be the, the source of the events going into event grid? Ah, um, so the idea there would be that you can go and upload um, a, so if we go with the thumbnailing idea, which was one of the things that we had on the list, um, you would go and write and up, upload a file to an, a storage account. And we have some, we have PowerShell and or um, bash tooling for that. And um, then um, as the file gets uploaded, oh, it has been uploaded, um, you, that event gets triggered. Okay, so you're talking about blob storage, is that right? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, in that case, it's blob storage, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that seems, that seems the easiest, that's one of our canonical samples that we use. Um, and that's something that will, use, that will work for our thing and that will also similarly likely work for other platforms that you have this created event that's why we picked it and um so that would be the proposal from our side like put you someone pushes uploads a file into blob store and then um and then the event gets raised hmm. was it is it the expectation of everyone who's working on this that they'd like to be involved in a in a single demo um, I don't think it's necessary to put it all in one roof. Right. Also be quite complex. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very many people in one, in one effort. So that <laughs> makes, that tends to make things a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So do I think. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Uh, would love to show some stuff off during the talk. Looks like we're going to have a lot of stuff to show off. Um, if there's a way we could simplify it into into one demo that I could do during the talk, that would that would be a lot easier. But I'm, you know, as of right now, it's going to be hard to incorporate everyone. Uh, I think yeah, the, the only thought that I have around being able to encompass multiple would be like a trace route type of capability where you would consume an event, add something, add text that made it to your uh, event handler, and then pass it on to the next one. But it becomes complex, getting everything set up and getting the ordering right. Yes, I saw that in here. I think that's going to be awesome, but I think it might be pretty complex to implement for the conference. <clears throat> So, Austin, what did you have any particular scenario in mind uh, for what you wanted to do? Um, doing some examples using the pattern that Clemens suggested, 
uh, was exactly what I thought would be something that's kind of reasonable. Um, incorporating all these people is going to be difficult. Uh, it, it also depends on the use case. Like what are we, what use case are we targeting in this? And what is, what is this kind of multi-cloud scenario that we need to actually, where this would, where would, where, the, where cloud events would be helpful. I think that's going to speak a lot to, to users. So honing in on that, involving a few people in that, um, I think would be, I think would be pretty good. So Austin, uh, how far along are you in terms of implementing this, say in your event gateway? Um, we support cloud events uh, today. We have the event gateway working as a hosted service. Um, the role it would play in this world is it would just kind of, it would be a broker or a router uh, across these clouds potentially. So you wouldn't have to map directly from Clemens Azure functions to uh, whatever's receiving it on the Google side. You would kind of send it off from the Azure function to the event gateway. The event gateway could send it off to about three different providers, potentially. That, that works for me. <clears throat> you mean three different consumers, is that right? Sorry, three different consumers, yes, mm -hmm. on different, on different uh, clouds. So uh, the the offering we have, we could potentially um, be one of those consumers, I think, um, to receive cloud events uh, from your gateway. And Louis, you're you're working on the Kubeless project, right? Uh, no, no, we have a um, a product that essentially would run on a laptop. Uh, I described it last week, where we can actually oh. um, it essentially allows you to run. Um, uh, functions on your gateway, uh, the cloud, essentially cloud functions or whatever you want to call them on your gateway to evaluate and test them. And mm -hmm. what we can do is um, be able to receive uh, events from the cloud, uh, maybe say from a, an event gateway and then um, uh, process them and potentially hand them off, deliver them elsewhere. So, but essentially we can, uh, uh, fundamentally we'd like to be able to consume cloud events um, and uh, you know, do some processing on them. And maybe potentially be an element in, in, in a chain of events, you know, do some trace routing, uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. Great, well, <clears throat> Having one provider uh, publish an event and then sending it through the gateway and then having multiple consumers uh, react is certainly doable. Is everybody, does everybody's FAS offering have HTTP support? Yes. Ours does. Mm -hmm. I know Google's does. Yeah, we, we could do that. This dispatch supports that. Right, so we're gonna to need to send the cloud events in the HTTP request body, I guess, and then each function will have to have something that extracts that, extracts that body. Which is pretty simple. Yep. Okay. Um, I think we need a killer use case. What do you all think? Yeah, use case is always good. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like uh, there's a lot of interest in storage around here, especially. Yeah, yeah I think I think it, it's it's the it's a very tangible one, right? So you can make a um, um, you can obviously construct all kinds of workflow cases around files very easily. Um, and the, I think what we discussed last week when you were not there is, um, either, um, so taking a JPEG image and, um, and wa watermarking it, mm -hmm. um, which you can take as, um, a, um, a story of, um, uh, let me see, I, I might have a, yeah, I, I think one thing that we mentioned on the last call was that. The, the whole thumbnailing uh, scenario dem demo is getting a little dated and boring. And we yeah, really, 
we were looking at watermarking, although something text-based might be easier and have less requirements, you know, around that. The so if, if I were, yeah, if I were, if I were um, um, doing something, I'm, I'm trying to find a slide that I made for something um, here. I can't find Welcome, it. Doug. So, so there's a, um, we have a we have a scenario that for something else where you upload you you snap a photo with a camera you upload it into a blob from the blob then you trigger you trigger a function the function then runs it through a, um, a computer vision API to go and classify that picture mm -hmm. um, and then um, it goes with that classification it goes um, into an so we move that blob into a picture inventory. Um, the 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 classifications get um, uh, indexed, and then it gets um, then then you have it ingested. Then you do an ingestion raise. Uh, you raise an ingestion thing. You make it available to a newsroom application. I mean, there's all kinds of you can you can come up with a flow where you start with a picture of a journalist who's in the field with their camera. And you know where they are, and then they kind of start w from there with a flow that ends up on someone's news desk. Mm. And they can go and pick pick pictures for the event that they put on the website, and you can go and make that all very event driven. So it goes from from just a simple thumbnail scenario to something that's more, um, you know, uh, simulates reality a little bit more for something that's very dynamic and needs to be pretty fast. Right. And then of course, once the journalist picks that then you really need to have already the thumbnail sitting somewhere in your in your um, blob store so you can as you use them as you use the image for an article um, all the thumbnails are already there and can be can be referenced it's just that's just a tall order to build within two weeks without us having identified a resource who will do it yes well, it, you, you could also think of you could do it a different way which is if you're if you're giving an image, you do the classification and then you just do a quick watermark of the classification on top of the image and leave it like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just giving an example of, of a thing that we, that might be doable. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just a question of, you know, how much, how much uh, power do we have to go and do this given the time and giving res given resources because that's always the problem. Uh, let me throw out a, a suggestion. How about, um, you know, one thing we see with our serverless framework all the time is that people are interested in other providers because they want access to cool kind of hosted managed services to do AI or machine learning stuff that another provider doesn't have. And we think that this would be a compelling story for cloud events in general. I mean, if you have something that happens on one provider, and you want to do something with that data, whether it's an image or whether it's you know a statement of text or something like that. If you can be able to port it over to another cloud provider easily to gain access to a managed service that they're really good at, um, that maybe the other providers don't have, then that could be very compelling for users. So perhaps there's a story here where some image is uploaded somewhere and the event is kind of spread around to do all types of different processing on various functions located on different providers. But those functions on different providers should try and use some cool managed service um, that, may, that maybe they, uh, that they offer that is kind of unique um, and great. And to do some type of processing to kind of tell a chapter of this story, whatever's happening with this image. I like to, Clemens story a lot about this journalist taking a photo in the field. We could do something like that. The photo can go out to functions everywhere and a managed service can go do some cool processing on it. Um, but that would be a cool way to show off, you know, not just kind of interrupt, but say, Hey, this is a means of gaining access to a lot of the cool services that the cloud providers are offering that not, not a single cloud provider is offering. What do you all think about that? Yeah, I think that that is a good uh, nirvana with respect to where we want to get being able to just use any cloud service using cloud events. So I like it. I agree.
Okay. I think the way to do this is perhaps we have to figure out what that story is. And each function as a service provider who wants to be involved needs to make sure they support HTTP, of course. And then they have to figure out what they're going to do as part of that story in their function. Right. Okay. Is it, does, anyone, does anyone else have any thoughts about this? Well, um, I think we should figure out who's going to be able to write a function that does something and we should figure out what that story is. We can even start with this, uh, this story that Clemens put out there of a journalist taking a photo of the field. Okay. Um, yeah, I can also... I'm not going to say yes for my side just because I'm overloaded with all kinds of other things. Uh, we have the build conference coming up too, so that's not helping. So you you will be able to provide the the function. Then. Uh, uh, yeah, I will be able to write. To, I will be able to provide the function that um, that uh, translates the the storage event. I will definitely be, be able to do that. Um, another great example could just be a, um, an inventory item, a photo for an inventory item. Nordstrom, there's a few people in at Nordstrom who are kind of working on this POC to build an event driven Nordstrom. And they, they have a pretty neat workflow around just a, a new inventory item gets added. Someone receives an event to go take a photo. They, they take a photo with their phone. That's sent as a um, MMS message, which gets converted to an event saying that the photo is available. That event then triggers some functions to do some processing on the photo. Um, but anyway, there's, there's another story there I think that could be interesting. Okay, does anyone have any preference on what, the, what that story should be? I don't know that any of us have uh, hard preferences on any of this. Okay. I think Perhaps. that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps what we can do is during the next call on Thursday, we could say, here's what we think the premise of the demo is. Um, it's going to be the journalist takes a photo of the field or a new inventory item is added to an e-commerce store. And we say, hey, this, this event is going to, can be sent out to any cloud provider but it's up to you to figure out what you want to do in your function that's going to add value to that to that story overall. So in some ways I'm I'm actually liking the the thought of using a consumer or a person using their cell phone as opposed to a journalist. Cuz I think it makes it more real for people. Mhm. Mm Yeah, I, when I saw that demo, I was I really liked it because it it was an event driven workflow that incorporated like a human element, right? This new inventory item was added, and then an event was sent that like the photo needed to be taken, and the photographer could be on vacation for two weeks or something and come back and see these events and you know take photos. And then the event driven and while they're gone, of course, the event driven workflow is paused. But as soon as they take that photo, it kicks off again and continues where it left off. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I love that demo, but doing anything with like text messages or MMS might might be a, a little bit more technically complicated. Just going to call that out. So, that, so the person would receive some uh, an email to or a text to to do, to take the photograph. Yes, I think it was it was either a text or an email. Mm -hmm. um, Eric Erickson, who's joining the cloud events call from Nordstrom. Uh, he worked on that project, so he could describe it um, on Thursday if he's on the call. So just, I'm, I'm sorry, I was I was distracted and I got in late. This is Doug. Um, what in the scenario you described, Austin? What would be the 
infrastructure that people would, in essence, I guess, subscribe to to receive the function event? The infrastructure that they subscribe to to receive the event, it could be our event gateway. It could be a direct, um, it could be a direct HTTP call from one of the other functions. So it could be a couple of things. The benefit about our event gateway, though, is you just publish it. I mean, the whole thing is designed to handle cross-cloud uh, events and transport. Um, but you could publish an event to that, that one place, and it'll broker it off to multiple functions via synchronous or uh, asynchronous workflows. Right. So would, would you have time on your end to put together that gateway uh, so that people can then worry about just focusing on how to get their function of the service working and then subscribe to your stuff. And that way they can all in essence just work on the back end, and you handle the front end. Absolutely. We already have a hosted version of our gateway in a private beta right now, which supports cloud events. Okay. So that, so that thing is up and running and it can receive events just via HTTP and send it off to, um, it can send it off to any fast provider that supports HTTP right now. So interesting. <laughs> So is it as simple as you tell us where that thing is and then we can, I assume you could probably either open it up or give us the right credentials so that any of us could then basically push events to the gateway and then it would get, the events would then get pushed out to anybody that subscribed to it and that way we can test this uh, offline? Yep, absolutely. It exposes uh, endpoints, which you could send different events to. And we could do it without auth to not make it super complicated for the demo. Um, but it all, it all depends on what story we're going to tell, what that, what that compelling use case is. And what I suggested, I think right when you joined the call is that an event comes from somewhere, maybe it's related to a photo and that event is then sent into the event gateway, which then triggers multiple functions on different fast providers who all do some interesting processing on that photo that kind of tells a, a chapter uh, of that story. And the story examples we laid out are there's a journalist taking a photo in the field um, or there's uh, a new inventory item added to an e-commerce store. Right. Okay. Now that sounds good to me. I was just thinking uh, from a stepwise progression, the easiest thing for the initial first step might just be to tell us where that gateway is so that we can push events to it and subscribe to it. And then we can work on, you know, you get that basic flow of being able to push events, receive events, and then figure out, okay, once you receive the event, what is each provider going to do with that event to, to fill out the exact story itself? But at least the infrastructure itself is in place. Yep. Um, and I could do that. It's going to be pretty simple to emulate though. It's just going to be a, a basic HTTP request. I think the cloud events will be in the request body. So all the, all the fast functions really have to do is expose some type of endpoint and um, then receive the HTTP request and pull out the cloud event from the event body. So they're gonna have to write some code at the beginning of their function to do that. Yep. Um, but we, we could start setting that up, you know, right away so they could, they could play with it. I think what's most important is just what that story is and what the, what those functions are doing. That's going to be compelling to users. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Makes sense. So I suggested we pitch this on the Thursday call. We say, here's what we think we're doing. Um, you know, whoever wants to participate can write a FAS function and figure out what they could do to support this story. I think it's going to be a bit over the top <laughs> initially. It won't, and this, you know, if we have, you know, several FAS providers involved in this, um, I don't know if it'll be a real realistic use case. Who knows what, what could happen in the future. But it can still be a pretty pretty compelling demo, which shows strong interop, which I think is is our goal. And if you know, and if we are showing developers, especially, that you could basically take events and react to them on any platform and gain access to anything that those platforms do via this uh, this event driven means, I think that would would also be pretty compelling for developers as well. Yep, I agree. Although it would be kind of cool if we could at least show the the the, the non-story infrastructure piece working by Thursday too. Say, hey, look, you could send an event to the gateway, get it at the other end. Now we just need to figure out the business logic. Yeah, we could do that. Um, and of course we have a lot of integrations already with AWS stuff. Um, and I got to chat with them. I got to check in and see how they'd like to be involved. But uh, 
um, yeah, we just have to figure out what that story is, kind of where it comes from. But in the meantime, we'll we'll set up uh, a partition version of the event gateway, uh, which we could use for the demo. Cool. Great. Yeah, we'll have we'll have the. Uh, I'm going to write that that Azure function, and um, we'll I'll put that into a repo, and then everybody can use it. And and we're probably going to have because. Um, yeah, I have to think about how to do the registration in an easy way, the, the push registration thing. But I'll have that within the next two days. Clement, are you awesome. thinking that that Azure function is going to be what's publishing an event? Or would you actually like to be on the consuming side? And can we just send something directly into Event Grid on Microsoft? Um, you can. So Event Grid is, um, let me think. Uh, yeah, you can't send into event grid just yet. Okay. Um, because the event grid needs to understand cloud events and it doesn't do that yet. But um, uh, yeah, I, I think us publishing the the blob events for now is um, is probably okay. But let me let me think about whether we want to go and also consume something. Because I mean, at the minimum, at a minimum, we'll have a some some function that does something with it. I mean, we can we, we already have a demo um, that does the thumbnailing piece, and I can easily rewrite that one to go and also deal with that cloud event. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna have a repo that shows both of those things, and then we can see how we can go and compose them. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be the translator to the cloud event, and then there's going to be a version of our thumbnailer that understands cloud events. Yep. Okay. Great. And I don't want to add to the scope because this is already a lot, but yeah. this this trans translator or transformer that you're building, um, I do believe that there is a big there's potential for a great open source project here which is just a simple library that knows how to transform common events from providers into cloud events. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm having something much more, e much easier in mind that is not necessarily generic. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. It would be, it would be difficult to get this thing out the door before then. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to, I don't want to go and framework it. I'm always tempted to framework these things, but in this case, I want to put some restraints on myself and not do it. I, I think that's a smart move. Um, so, and if we so, can chat about this as the next step. All right, Austin, one of the things that Dispatch is doing is uh, exactly that, it's providing uh, drivers which will translate between events. Mm -hmm. So consume an event and then uh, translate it into cloud events. So possibly that some of the things that we're doing could help there. Right, okay. For dispatch, would we would we just send the event into dispatch and dispatch can broker it off to various various other services? It's really brokering for for an internal function right now. I'd have to. I'm sure that we could repack okay. as as a as a function. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be that difficult. Okay. Well, I believe we need to get a couple story ideas. We, we have two, um, but we could keep adding them to the agenda doc. And this is what we should present on Thursday. And then maybe we vote on something. I'm not sure how we want to do that, but we should try and pick something ASAP on Thursday. And then from there, we should ask who wants to participate, who wants to write a FAST functions and say the criteria is you have to be able to receive HTTP request, post request, and get the uh, cloud event in the event body. And hopefully we can get some participants by Thursday. Yeah. All right, so I, I updated the, for next steps, Clemens to build a event grid function in the next couple of days and publish their repo. Austin, look at a private version of event gateway for people to look into and all need more brainstorming on scenario user search to present a KubeCon. 
Uh, Austin, <clears throat> I assume when you get the gateway stood up, you'll send out a note to us so we know what APIs to call to publish events and receive events or subscribe. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, when can you send that out so we could maybe start testing that? Um, I'm probably going to need till end of the week, but uh, not sure. Might, might be able to send it out sooner. But again, it's just going to receive... It's just going to receive an HTTP. It's just going to send out an HTTP you know, post request. So as long as your function can can receive HTTP requests, then you know you should be able to mock it pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. What the event is is what we need to figure out, and what the event is is going to be dependent on the story that we want to tell, the use case that we want to tell. So that might be the bigger blocker for you right now. Okay, well, this is going to be a pretty, <laughs> a pretty incredible demo if we could pull this off. I'm going to be praying to the demo gods. I should probably start, start doing that right now. Do several sacrifices yes. or something because <laughs> this is ambitious. But I, but I like it, and I will say that just looking over the list of people and projects or companies and projects that are supporting this right now, it's a pretty compelling list, and I do think we're going to make an impact. It's just you know even if we don't get the demo for whatever reason, just by showing off how many people are looking to support this, I think it's going to. It's going to create a picture of possibility um, and lay out, yeah, just show people what the, what the future could potentially look like with all these people joining already. I so. agree. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, okay, that sounds like a plan. Anything else we should discuss regarding this? I think this is good. Now. Okay, we have to do some brainstorming about that killer use case or that killer story, though. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Yeah, and one, one thing we can use is either Slack or, or email as well to be able to put things out there. We don't need a call to have us all talk about it. Yes, if you have an idea, I have, we, should, we should just post them in Slack. Okay, if you're all using the newfangled thing, then I will do, do that, too. <laughs> Newfangled thing, yes. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, I think that's it. Okay. Have a good day. Thanks Great. Thank, thank you, everyone. Bye.